Hello and welcome to Decoding the New Economy. Today I'm joined with Aletha Essin, CEO of Labellium, a sensor company based in Spain with a really fantastic story to tell. Aletha, thank you very much for joining us. You're welcome. Uh, first of all, let's kick off with mm -hmm. what Labellium does. Well, basically, Libellion connects any kind of sensor using any communication protocol to any information system. So, basically, we make it possible to monitor um, the amount of water in vineyards to control the irrigation system, to detect free parking spots, or to even detect forest fires early. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so a whole range of sensors there. Yeah, so it's a totally horizontal platform and we have more than 60 different sensors. So we have had uh, projects like uh, monitoring stress levels in koalas in Australia, right. uh, but also e-health um, projects for monitor detecting pneumonia in newborns, um, uh, applications in the um, industrial sector, home automation, so many, many different verticals. Right. And what's the most interesting vertical you've been involved in? I think that um, the most interesting and the most, the hottest right now could be agriculture mm -hmm. because there is a very clear return on investment and we've been doing these uh, projects uh, for monitoring um, Alvarino in Rias Baisas in Galicia, which yes. is a very, very nice project. And the second vertical, which is really taking off in, in IoT, is the smart cities, where it's right. also very interesting. Hmm. Now, Libellium is a really interesting name. Uh, what's the story behind that? Well, that's um, Libellium stands from Libellula, which is the, the Spanish name for dragonfly. And we wanted to, to name the company after a swarming insect because we that's the idea of these tiny sensors communicating each other and transmitting the the message to one point to another one. Right. Now with the with the swarm there, you've also been heavily involved in open source and crowdsourcing too. Mm -hmm. But uh, tell me more about that. That's um <clears throat> That's something that we are uh, that we are seeing uh, with a lot of interest right now. Uh, for example, we made a project in Fukushima. So when the nuclear accident happened, we sent some Geiger counters to the Tokyo hackerspace, mm -hmm. um, and some of the um, and the rest we put them just to cover the cost. Yes. And suddenly, all the people with the um, Geiger counters started to publish the data into the internet. Right. So they were keeping a real time and totally independent radiation map just uh, made by the activist citizens that yes. were concerned about that. Right, so you had the whole bunch of uh, activists outside of governments uh, putting mm. together some open data there. Yeah, mm. that's right. Yeah. Now, the, what was the uh, motivation for you setting up Labellium? It was maybe the a matter of a uh, rebel to not to to want to go abroad to yes. to make the company to work in the company that you you want to be um, we just said well let's build a company where we want to be and let's let's take the opportunity to make something of a bigger impact yes. so and now we are so happy because it's it's very exciting to be in the IoT because it's going to be the next technological revolution. Mm. Now in Spain, there's a lot of investment in this. Uh, mm -hmm. So cities like uh, Barcelona really investing in, the, in mm -hmm. the smart connected cities. Does that help your business? I think that uh, whatever it's uh, it's helping to promote the ecosystem, mm -hmm. it's always helping us. And it's true that despite the economy, we are seeing a number of projects in Spain about smart cities. In fact, I'm saying that. Spain is the Silicon Valley for smart cities, right? And and that's happening. So in terms of attracting the um, attracting big companies to look at what's going on in Spain mm. to build a bigger brand around the IoT and Spain, I think yes. that really helps. Right. And where do you see Labellium going in the next five years? Well, right now we are expanding our um, our company, so we have just open here in the US to to give a better service to our uh, US customers yes and the idea is to continue to expand the distributors network so that's what we are really working on that mm. yeah now with your backing you've uh, you've bootstrapped this business you mm -hmm. didn't have any venture capital or anything like that mm -hmm. how did you find that um, in growing a business with little capital it was challenging mm. but um, 
but it really helped us to be austere and to yes. to build the company in a very robust and steady way. So we start by um, by selling products and on the uh, internet business that we started called Cooking Hacks, right. which is the, the do-it-yourself version for the Internet of Things. Hmm. So now that's a, uh, it was the, the way of funding the company basically, and we also have some grants and some awards from, uh, from the government and from yes. private companies, but thanks to Cooking Hacks, we were able to connect to makers and right now we have another channel for speaking directly to them. Right. Yep. So you start finding the makers movement is a mm -hmm. really good um, channel for your business too. Totally. Yeah. Mm. So where do you see the Internet of Things in five years time? I think that uh, it's going to be, we are going to be seeing thousands of sensors, billions of sensors, but more than focus on the, the big numbers that are out there, mm -hmm. I would say that the the biggest legacy that the, I, that the IoT can bring us is transparency. Right. So we are we are controlling everything and and the in the smart cities movement what you can see is that the IoT gives a very good opportunity to have a dashboard for cities so that you can see everything. You can see the investment made for, uh, for reducing the, congestion, the traffic congestion downtown, mm -hmm. the, see the carbon footprint reduced because of the traffic decrease, yes. the, the return on investment. So you can, you can have very objective facts mm. to show to the citizens and they can be, make better choices to, to vote. Mm. So. so you see it as a force for democracy too? I think so. I mm. really think so, and and I would like more people talking about this because yes. yeah, it's the it's the real thing. It's it's beyond technology. Right. Well, and that's a great point, and that's a great way to finish mm. up this conversation. I hope we're starting another conversation on that. Alicia, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. And thank you for joining Decoding the New Economy.